Well, hello again. I'm going to lead us through lesson number 11, which is May the 10th, page 83, if you have a student book on the Adult Bible Study series. This is entitled, God's Grace Towards Adam, Eve, and Cain. We were in New, New Jerusalem last week in Revelations. Now this week, we have gone back to Genesis, and we're looking at Cain and Abel. Let us read the scripture first that we are, uh, our text is based on. And this, there's two scriptures here. One is Genesis 3, 21, and then it picks up at Genesis 4, 1 through 16. And for brevity, I may not read all of 1 through 16, but I encourage you to do that on your own. But first, Genesis 3, 21. This is after uh, Adam and Eve were discovered and, and uh, they were uh, found to be uh, uh, naked. And here's what the Lord said on 21. The Lord God made the man and his wife leather clothes and dressed them. Now we switch over to, to Cain and Abel in chapter 4. And for brevity, we'll pick up at verse 3. This is after Cain and Abel were born. Abel cared for the flocks, and Cain farmed the fertile land. Of course, Cain and Abel were children of Adam and Eve. And they were already out of, of uh, the garden in the east of Eden at that time. Sometime later, Cain presented an offering to the Lord from the land's crops, while Abel presented his flock's oldest offspring with their fat. The Lord looked favorably on Abel and his sacrifices, but didn't look favorably upon Cain and his sacrifices. Cain became very angry and looked resentful. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why do you look so resentful? If you do the right thing, you won't be accepted. But if you don't do the right thing, the sin will be waiting at the door, ready to strike. It will entice you and must rule over it. And from this point, we know what happens. They went out into the field, and, and uh, there was a confrontation, and uh, Cain uh, killed Abel. The Lord then said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Cain said, I don't know. Am I br my brother's guardian? And of course, most scriptures that we recall over the years says, Are, Am I my brother's keeper? Uh, the Lord said, Why did you do this? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. You are now cursed from the ground that opened its mouth to take your brother's blood uh, from your hand. When, your farm, when you farm the fertile land, it will no longer grow anything for you, and you will be a roving nomad on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Now that you've driven me out from the fertile land and I've hidden from your presence, I'm about to become a roving, roving nomad on the earth, and anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, It won't happen. Anyone who kills Cain will pay, be paid back seven times. The Lord put a sign on Cain so that no one who found him would assault him. Cain left the Lord's presence and he settled down in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Now, from our scripture here, we are going to, to uh, come over on page 83 in our text, if you have it available to you. And again, if you don't have it available and would like a copy, just call the church office or my office and we'll be glad to make a copy for next week's lesson. Uh, the emphasis on this, this section is on grace. And we're going to look at two examples of God's grace manifest or, or played out in, <clears throat> in these stories. The first one has to do with, with God's grace towards Adam and Eve. And you say, what grace was there? Well, the grace is that God now recognized that they were naked, and he clothed them uh, with, with uh, leather clothing and dressed them. And that's from the chapter 3. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that, that the author talks about, there's some stories here on 84 you can read, talks about uh, his example of grace in his life, and it had to do with him taking a Latin test in college, and how he decided not to study very hard and wound up doing very bad on it, or at least he thought, but his teacher gave him an A. And when he should have received an F, that's God's riches at Christ's expense, grace, and that's uh, something un unmerited or undeserved favor, and that's what he got here. Uh, and the, he asked this professor, why did you give me this? He says, 
uh, your answers were poor. However, I know that you have what you have done in my class and what kind of student you are, so I gave you the grade I assumed that you would have earned if something had not gotten in your way. Well, I've been several years in, in school, seven post high school, and I never had that happen to me. So uh, this was truly a great experience because he got something he sure didn't deserve. And what got in his way was apparently his own laziness or his desire not to study and try to slough through it. But anyway, he, as he said, he learned his lesson and never ignored a test again. So he, he appreciated that gift of grace. Now on page 85 in the text, we have uh, God doing a simple act of grace and caring by, by when he banished them. He, he gave them uh, leather clothes and dressing them. As the, as the text says, which is the second, le, sec, next to the second to last paragraph on page 85, like a heavenly tailor, the incredibly loving and gracious God made sure that the creatures were so har who were so horribly broken away from paradise that they would have clothes, clothes for the next stage in life, clothes for the next adventure. It was a gracious gift from God made without comment to cover the shame and vulnerability of the human. And I have to be honest with you, I have a different spin on that. When it says God um, made them leather clothes and dressed them, I, I get a vision, and this is not a personal example by any stretch of the imagination, so don't let your mind wander. But in the 70s, when everybody streaked, or, or a lot of people streaked in college and whatever, uh, and Ray Stevens had wrote the song, They Call Me the Streak. But uh, I can see a bunch of kids running down the road, again, not personal example, running down the road, being caught by the farmer in, the, in, their, uh, uh, in their birthday suits, called, called the parents at midnight. The parents come, to, him, come to, to the house and with the clothes and throws the clothes at the kids disgustedly and says, here's some clothes. That's what I see, not necessarily a picture of grace, but a picture of disgust for them disobeying and doing that. So, obviously, uh, the version here that is much more suitable to teaching a uh, point on grace than, than my example. But, but clearly, we've all been in a situation where we deserved something that we didn't get, and what we got turned out to be a lot better and because of, of grace. I remember when I was in law school, and went to a, a Sunday school class at, at Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, this gentleman that taught the class uh, said that uh, he was, had an insurance claim that came up after his insurance lapsed, but he was in the grace period, and all his insurance agent said was go ahead and pay the, grace, pay the premium during this grace period. It's reinstated, and therefore the accident is covered. Again, God's, in that case, the undeserved merit or favor, this is God's uh, riches at Christ's expense. So... On page 86, we will look at uh, his example. It's just a, one that we will not spend a lot of time on. It talks about uh, sometimes you can't always give grace, and sometimes you have to give, as he says, uh, I had to be just when I must. He, he, sometimes you have to uh, act, give acts of justice that don't necessarily uh, uh, boast well for the person who thinks they deserve grace or would like to have grace, but uh, sometimes you have to do that. So you can read that story on your own on page 86. So on page 87, we get back to the story of Cain and Abel. They were sons of Adam and Eve. And uh, uh, one of the things that, that uh, the author talks about that, that we really don't understand or know, and you can't glean this from the text, but the, the example here on page, uh, I mean, verse 3 is Cain presenting an offering to the Lord from the crops, the land crops, and Abel gave from the flock's oldest offspring. And for whatever reason, and the text doesn't tell us, but the, the text just simply says the Lord looked favorably on Abel and his sacrifice, but did not so on Cain and his sacrifice. Now, that's an example where we, we can't get in the mind of God to know. The only thing that I saw that uh, my Bible, which is the, the Wesley Study Bible, uh, made a reference, cross-reference to an old, a New Testament scripture that I'm going to read real quickly. And this is over in 1 John uh, 3, verse 12. And this... Uh, the scripture says, Don't behave like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he kill him? He killed him because his own works were evil, but the works of his brother were righteous. So there's apparently a subplot going on there that, that led the Lord to, God to believe that, that the, uh, uh, 
the offering that presented by Cain was not worthy, and therefore it was a, a, a pale, pale in comparison to what uh, Abel provided. So, we have the murder and then the confrontation by God that uh, said, uh, uh, where's your son, uh, your brother? Of course, God knew all along where what had happened, uh, but he was trying to uh, get a confession, trying to get some remorse, maybe trying to get some... Uh, a uh, person trying to work through the through the the, the things, but anyway, uh, the Lord punished him, and the punishment he gave again it was punishment that that resulted in mercy. And you say, how can punishment result in mercy? Sometimes they they are commingled. Sometimes they they are without mercy. It seems like, but uh, but in this case, he was banned from what from what number one, he was not able to. To having a fertile land, because uh, the Lord would uh, curse it. Uh, so the farm. So when you farm the fertile land, it will no longer grow anything for uh, for you, and you will become a roving nomad. So he was on his own. He was a man without a country. He was dispossessed and had to take off. And and he doesn't tell us whether uh, uh, Cain took him at his word and and tried to toil the soil, only to find that he couldn't find it. Uh, sometimes people will do that when they know they can't do the, when they're told they can't do something they'll try it anyway just to see but in this case we don't know whether he he just took God at his word and didn't even try to toil uh, and labor with a fertile soul because he thought it would be fruitless or whether he would give it the old college try as they sometimes say but anyway uh, that was his that was his uh, punishment and then uh, uh, chap verse 13 in chapter 4. Uh, Cain says, my punishment is more than I can bear. He kind of broke under pressure there. He said, I just can't do this because you've driven me from fertile land, and now you, uh, I'm a roving nomad people, and anyone who finds me will kill me. Now, I don't know who anyone would be because as far as I know, they're, they're all connected at that time, so I don't know uh, uh, who he's referring to, but uh, in, in this particular case, he was concerned about people killing him. Now, interestingly enough, here the Lord says, that's not going to happen to you, and here's why. He, he said, I will pay back seven times, uh, the, and the Lord will put a sign on, on Cain so nobody uh, would, who found him would assault him. Now, I, we don't know. The text does not give us a clue what the sign actually was, but uh, it, it, I don't know if it's a scarlet L type sign on the forehead or if it was a... Uh, tattoo or what, but there was a sign that, that prevented him from being touched. But his first, uh, the Lord's first statement was that Cain, uh, if somebody harmed him, uh, it would be harmed, he'd be harmed back seven times. Now, I don't know that, uh, that's not, I don't know what that means, and the text uh, uh, doesn't necessarily tell, tell us. Uh, uh, the student guide, had, well, the leader's guide gives some theories here that have been advanced over the years. He said, anyone who dared to kill Cain would receive payback times seven. How does one kill seven, one seven, seven times over? Well, some scholars suppose that kill, uh, Cain's killer and six of the killer's relatives would die. So that's an example of where uh, seven people would perish for one person. Of course, Cain would still be dead, but seven people would suffer in his family. Another suggestion is that retribution would extend to seven generations of Cain's family, which would be on down the family tree. So... Uh, Whatever it was, it was apparently enough that God, God thought to, to keep them safe in his nomad. But again, his punishment was, uh, was, was to be, as, as the author says, as the text says, left the presence of the Lord. The Lord is no longer in his, in his presence. But that doesn't mean the Lord was not overseeing him. It's just that the Lord's uh, walk with him was going to be, I guess, separated. And he settled down in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So uh, there's, there's, the scripture tells us, uh, I mean, their text tells us about the land of Nod. And, and uh, for brevity, I'm uh, not going to take the time to look for it, but um, that's in verse 16. But anyway, uh, clearly this is an example that the author is trying to help uh tie together the, the example of grace and we've just got a few minutes left in my 15 minute segment here so so the grace that was afforded to Cain again he probably didn't think it was grace when, when he had the punishment dealt out to him but uh, uh, again Cain killed his brother and he can't expect to get a certificate of, of achievement so he's got to, to pay the piper and, and the Lord 
fashioned a remedy, fashioned a, a, a punishment that was just and reasonable under the circumstances, but also gave, gave enough grace to allow him to be, be taken care of and to not uh, uh, totally be, be uh, disenfranchised from life and was allowed to, to have a, a sign placed on him that would make sure nobody would assault him. Now that's our lesson in a, in a thumbnail sketch for in about 15 and a half minutes. And I encourage you to read the lesson again uh, uh, in a little bit more depth and read the scripture. Uh, again, we're taking, taking a lesson from uh, the Old Testament book, uh, chapter 3 in, in Genesis uh, 21, and then also the main text is 4, 1 through 16. So that's our lesson plan for today. We'll pick up next week with the next lesson. And I encourage you again, if you'd like to go ahead and read uh, uh, the lesson, get a hold of the book, call me and we'll do that. It'll be Exodus 16, 2 through 30. Let's have a word of prayer. Holy God, thank you so much for this lesson of grace. Grace that sometimes people like Cain doesn't deserve. Certainly we don't deserve the grace we receive from you that's unmerited, but nonetheless you love us enough to, to impart that to us. Guide us with, with uh, our learning opportunities that, that lead us through, through times to, uh, to keep from having to extend ourselves to your grace and try to walk in your path uh, even more. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.